battle ensues between Brock Lesnar and Triple H, here comes the Generation X. That would have been an effective way to get over the fact Triple H would be facing Brock Lesnar at the 25th anniversary of SummerSlam, rather than have the Generation X come out and do a number on Damian Sandell, who is a fantastic new talent star who could have his career go in so many different directions, but it seems like Damian Sandell's career is on a downward spiral and going absolutely nowhere. He's a career that's going south quicker than probably any career has gone south in WWE's history. He's going south quicker than Jack Swagger is going south. With a loss to Brutus Clay, that doesn't look good on a former world champion's resume, to say the very least, but at least Jack Swagger has a bit of uh, prosperity ahead for him, more than I can say for Damian Sandell and what he did with Generation X on the 1000th edition of Raw. You know, DX come out, they cut a phenomenal promo, they could have left Damian Sandell out of it. The promo was really all that was needed for the Generation X reunion. Honestly, a total of five DX members. We have Shawn Michaels and Triple H coming out, uh, cutting a phenomenal and comical promo. Here come Billy Gunn, Road Dog, the New Age Outlaws, along with Shawn Waltman. Um, you know, I think the promo would have been enough. Uh, we didn't need Damian Sandell interrupting the Generation X, calling them a bunch of degenerates who had no respect uh, for anybody because of their ignorance. Uh, Triple H and uh, Shawn Michaels huddle with the other three members of DX and they implement a plan to rid WWE Raw of uh, Damian Sandell. And DX allows, we'll see 2,000 editions of Raw. Uh, I think the DX reunion would have been more effectively done if it would have been involved with the whole Triple H, Brock Lesnar, SummerSlam exceptions, um, you know, angle, but uh, it wasn't done that way. You know, some fans will think the DX reunion should have been kept separate. Uh, from the Brock Lesnar Triple H angle that's going on for the 25th anniversary of SummerSlam. And I'm not saying you're wrong about that, because you are entitled to your opinion. But honestly, uh, they could have tied uh, the DX reunion in with the Brock Lesnar Triple H angle. Uh, the brawl ensues. Here comes DX to bail Triple H out, and Stephanie McMahon can join in with DX uh, like she has in the past for several editions of Raw, especially during the Attitude Era when DX were at its peak. Um, you know, it would have made more sense to do it that way rather than lose about 10 or 15 minutes of good television time with a promo involving DX and Damian Sandow, which I completely was blown away by. The promo was fantastic, but Damian Sandow ruined what the DX reunion could have potentially been. Uh, you could have had a bigger star come out and interrupt DX if you were going to do it that way and keep it separate. Uh, from Brock Lesnar and Triple H. I didn't necessarily agree with it being kept separate from Brock Lesnar and Triple H. Uh, you could have had DX come out, do a number on Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman, had Stephanie McMahon involved uh, if you wanted. Uh, but having DX and the Triple H and Brock Lesnar kept separate from one another, big loss on WWE's part. You're not going to get a 1,000 edition of Raw uh, overdoing. Um, you know, you really ruined uh, the DX reunion because of Damian Sandell's involvement. And I really don't see... Damian Sandell's career going uh, in a positive direction from what happened to him, courtesy of DX in the 1000th edition of Raw. His career is going south probably quicker than any new talent issue star's career is going, or has been going, over the last several months. Um, so the DX reunion really lets me down. Uh, from there, we see a six-man tag team match featuring world champion Sheamus teaming with Sin Cara and Rey Mysterio against Dolph Ziggler, Chris Jericho, who were uh, forced to team together, and uh, the uh, number one contender for the world championship right now, Alberto Del Rio. Um, it was a good six-man tag team match because Jim Ross provided commentary. Without the commentary of Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler, uh, which the commentary should have been left up to, you could have muted Michael Cole for that one match, uh, given how uh, thrilled Michael Cole was to be sitting next to two Hall of Famers, the Hall of Fame announce team as they're called. If it had not have been for the commentary of Jim Ross, whose beard looks absolutely fantastic, by the way, a very different look for Jim Ross, I love it, uh, the match probably wouldn't have been as effectively uh, done for the 1000 edition of Raw. It would have been looked at as a six-man tag team match that was just used to take up some television time for the three-hour show. Uh, the Alberto Del Rio, Sheamus, Rey Mysterio angle um, is interesting, uh, but not as interesting as some of the things that are happening right now in the WWE. Obviously, we're indicating that there's going to be a three-way match. That's what WWE are indicating with the six-man tag match on Raw. Uh, of recency, the interruption of uh, Rey Mysterio during an Alberto Del Rio match on the final two-hour edition of Raw in WWE Raw's history. Uh, it's an interesting few, but it's not as interesting as what's going on right now with The Rock, John Cena, CM Punk, I mean, honestly. 
Um, so the match was good because of the commentary given by Jim Ross, who had a 15-year run with Jerry Lawler as the Raw announced team during the Attitude Era. Uh, he could have turned off the microphone of Michael Cole because I think the match would have been more effectively done with the commentary of Jim Ross being the lead voice and Jerry Lawler would have brought us down memory lane uh, from the Attitude Era where they had a 15-year run apart from that. Uh, Jim Ross has done commentary for virtually every promotion despite being fired. One of the most legendary voices within the WWE and I think that he'll be remembered for calling some infamous pay-per-view matches along with so many raw moments and with so many raw moments being called by Jim Ross you could have left Michael Cole out of the commentary for the six-man tag team match and just left it up to Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler it would have been a more effective way uh, to promote the six-man tag team match and potentially the world title program that's been building on SmackDown for quite some time for SummerSlam. Didn't really enjoy the three-way commentary from uh, Lawler, Cole, and Ross, but I think it would have been more effectively done if it would have been just left up to Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler, who had a 15-year run, especially during the Attitude Era, where they called so many memorable Raw moments without Michael Cole, who was just a backstage interviewer at that time. Uh, it would have been more effectively done if you would have left the commentary up to Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler. And I venture to say there are many people out there listening to this on YouTube.com who are in agreement with me. Uh, but the six-man tag team match was a great match, um, and it was because of the commentary provided by Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler, who we don't get enough matches commentated by from. Uh, WrestleMania is not enough uh, for Jim Ross to commentate. We need Jim Ross to commentate more shows, and he needs to be brought back to the Raw Nems team permanently, which is something I don't foresee happening, um, especially now, uh, because it would have happened by now if it was going to happen. Um, but I think that he needs to be brought back as a third party because his commentary never gets old. And he, he's one of those guys that you can just keep listening to over and over and over again. He's one guy who I never get tired of hearing. And there are a lot of commentators out there who I can't stand. Jonathan Coachman, Michael Cole are some of the commentators that get on my nerves. But Jim Ross is a guy I can just get lost in the commentary of. I can keep listening to him over and over and over again, and I hope we see him implemented as a third per, uh, person to the Raw commentating team. It's what the commentary on Raw needs right now. You have someone like Jerry Lawler who's been there for virtually every edition of Raw as he allowed. Uh, on the 1000 edition of Raw to Michael Cole during some comments that were given between the commentators. Uh, and, and honestly, right now, I think that with the history of um, Jim Ross on Monday Night Raw, I think he can afford to come in as a third full-time person on the commentary team for Monday Night Raw because he offered some incredible commentary and insight into feuds going on, especially on Friday Night SmackDown for that six-man tag team match featuring Sin Cara, Rey Mysterio, Sheamus, Alberto Del Rio, Chris Jericho, and the Money in the Bank Award winner for 2012, Dolph Ziggler. I also enjoyed the commentary about Jim Ross about the Money in the Bank contract and Dolph Ziggler being Mr. Money in the Bank for SmackDown for 2012. I really enjoyed uh, hearing Jim Ross's insight on Dolph Ziggler's future in the WWE, being that he's the 2012 SmackDown Mr. Money in the Bank uh, for the result of the SmackDown Money in the Bank ladder match. I really enjoyed hearing Jim Ross's opinion on uh, Dolph Ziggler being SmackDown's Mr. Money in the Bank. Uh, I think that uh, knowing now The Rock will compete at the 2013 Royal Rumble really made up for the first quarter of the Monday Night Raw Super Show to commemorate 1,000 editions of Raw. I think that if, ha if it had not have been uh, for The Rock being involved with the whole Daniel Bryan AJ wedding with CM Punk coming out interrupting Daniel Bryan from there, Daniel Bryan goes on to declare himself the greatest WWE superstar of all time, lets everybody know he's going to be the next WWE champion. We think there's going to be another match between Daniel Bryan and CM Punk set up for SummerSlam. Here comes The Rock and tells everybody he's just gotten word he'll compete at the 2013 Royal Rumble against whoever the champion is, who, who could be virtually anybody by the time we get to the Royal Rumble in Phoenix in 2013. I'm not saying it's going to be CM Punk. We get a rock bottom uh, from The Rock to Daniel Bryan after Daniel Bryan is referred to by The Rock as a homeless uh, Oompa Loompa uh, because Oompa Loompa banged a homeless lumberjack back in the day at some point. I really enjoyed uh, hearing that promo from The Rock, uh, we get a rock bottom to Daniel Bryan and an indication and a teaser of a CM Punk rock match which you fans voted for as a match you wanted to see for the title at the 2013 Royal Rumble. So you played your part there. 
uh, along with the touts you guys sent in. It was a fantastic edition of Monday Night Raw because of the interaction. Uh, you also got an Intercontinental Championship match you voted for the week prior uh, between The Miz and Christian, which saw The Miz win his first Intercontinental Championship. More on that in just a minute. Uh, but The Rock facing CM Punk for the WWE Championship. Uh, it was a, a great way of promoting it, uh, a potential Royal Rumble match. Um, I can say that I really am enjoying the fact now that it looks like CM Punk is going to play the heel character in this feud. Um, because it would have been more effectively done in my eyes by having CM Punk be a babyface just like The Rock. Then it would be kind of a, you know, half rock, half punk uh, type thing where the fans are kind of divided down the middle as they were for Cena versus Rock at WrestleMania 28. Um, I think that now with The Rock getting the GTS from CM Punk as the final angle done for the 1000 edition of Raw, we see CM Punk walk away so arrogantly with the title. He has now tied the reigns of uh, Hulk Hogan from 1991 and Bret Hart's reign as champion in 1994. Uh, a phenomenal accomplishment uh, for CM Punk. Now you're ruining CM Punk, driving the nail into his coffin of his career and his championship reign by having him feud against The Rock as a heel. I think that after promoting CM Punk as one of your most popular superstars over the last eight months, it definitely ruins CM Punk's wave of momentum he's been riding on. And once he has taken off that wave of momentum and eventually loses the championship after being one of the longest reigning WWE champions in the last 16 